G'day listeners, you are on the Big V Podcast. We are pre-season 2023. We are ready for this season to come. We are talking youth league to women today. Now there is a lot to discuss here, so we're going to get right into it. You're with Ted West and to my left is Mark Jeffers. How are you going, Mark? Yeah, good, mate. Really excited on the eve of the season. The, um, you know, however many sleeps we are away now, but um, I think it's going to be going to be a really big year. Yeah, it is. It is. And there's, there's been a lot of changes in this Youth League 2 women's competition. There's been a redevelopment. There's been players that have moved out. There's been a team that's left the competition and moved up. A lot has happened. Let's, let's get into it. Yeah, for sure. So let's talk about uh, let's talk about Sherbrooke entering this division. Firstly, yep. so they had a probably they'd describe it as a rough season last year up in Youth League One, but I think they're, they're a bit excited to um, be down in Youth League Two and ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. They're probably going to look to rebuild. I think they've retained quite a lot of their players. They've done a really good job with their seniors to to get into that championship division. So we'll see if there is going to be some sort of integration. It might be a bit tough having that that large split, that large difference of, of playing style. So we might not see too much of it in this competition, which is probably going to be beneficial for the Sherbrooke team as they redevelop. Yeah, I'd certainly expect, knowing knowing Sherbrooke and their organisation, I'd expect them to be ready to, to bounce straight back and uh, be ready to go. Yeah, absolutely. We also had Bellarine, who were the championship winners, uh, losers, sorry. Losers they came dead. second. They did come second. We had Coburg, apologies. Coburg were the team that did move out. Bellarine is still here. They're going to look to bounce back without the likes of Carly Sanders. Yeah, look, any time you take somebody of the caliber of Carly Sanders out of a team, you've got a pretty big hole to fill. Yeah. Now, being able to be firsthand at one of those games, one of those grand final games, you could see Carly's leadership out there um, was vital. Yeah. And you just wonder... Who is the next person to step up and fill those shoes? Look, it's going to be tough. You, you never really know in these competitions. There's always someone that's a sort of dark horse that's going to come up. I think Erin Wazowski is a potential youth league candidate over at Southern Peninsula. You know, she was that double-double king over there. I think she'll be really impressive this year. Yeah, she'll be She'll be certainly in the mix for an, um, for an MVP um, award, I think. She's, you know, she does a bit of everything. Um, teams, she's certainly probably one of the first names teams put on their scouting report. Yeah, I don't blame them. I really don't blame them. I think there's going to be a lot to digest here, but we also have the grading process, which is going to be very, very beneficial for this competition. Now moving down to eight teams, there's going to be a lot of movement with four teams finishing in finals now having the opportunity to move into Youth League 1 women. Yeah, come February, guys, it's probably the players probably aren't as aware as the coaches in the uh, administrators are, but uh, come February twenty, early February twenty twenty four, we're going to be having the top four youth league two women um, teams get to go to battle with the bottom four youth league one women's teams um, for that promotion, that relegation. There's no strict promotion relegation this year, so um, let's say this was in last year, Cobo could have to be battling it out, battling out for that for that promotion. So. Um, you know, it's it's something else to play for. Trying to get that top four, you're not just playing for finals anymore. You're playing for that opportunity to go up. Yeah, absolutely. And you would expect Bellarine to stay there. You would think Wall- uh, Mornington, sorry, are going to make that make that big step forward. You know, as well as Albury. Uh, I think Westernport are going to be strong. To be honest, I think they're going to do well. They had a, a pretty average season. They were sort of hovering in the middle there. They've kept a lot of their players. They're going to look to increase. Yeah, and they've sort of. They've got a little bit of stability in the, across their whole women's program. The um, with their Division One women being, you know, always there, thereabouts come finals time, and with some great leaders in that in that women's team, no doubt that'll sort of set the scene for their their youthies to ensure. And yeah, I think you're right. They might be ready to make that jump towards finals. Yeah, absolutely. I think Blackburn might be another team to look out for too. They uh, they obviously did struggle. They were at the lower end there, but you know they're consistently building. Yeah, and I think, you know, all of a sudden you, you, you build, you add a couple of key pieces in. And, um, yeah, I think you might be right, Ted. Blackburn might be in for a, a large season. Absolutely. Look, I'm super excited for Youth League 2 women. They're going to come out firing only the A team, so there's going to be a lot of battles, a lot of internal clashes, which is going to be fantastic. Stay locked in, guys. We'll be talking about them very, very soon. Thanks, guys.